Welcome to another episode of Raising OKC Kids, Conversations with Metro Family in Oklahoma City. I'm Kirsten Holder, and today we're talking with Emma Leach, Museum Manager of Education and Outreach at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame Gaylord Pickens Museum. Welcome, Emma. Thank you, Kirsten. Thank you so much for having me. We're so glad you're here and we're excited to dive in today and learn a little bit more about what you guys have to offer. So um, just introduction wise, uh, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame was founded in 1927 and was created to honor Oklahomans who had given outstanding service to the state during their lifetime and to provide educational programming for students of all ages. Through the annual Hall of Fame awards, as well as exhibits and experiences at the Gaylord Pickens Museum, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame preserves Oklahoma's unique history while promoting pride in our great state. Emma is a fourth generation Oklahoman and she has worked at the museum since 2017. She is responsible for programming, field trips, exhibits, and providing a positive visitor experience. She is clearly passionate about her community as apparent by her work at the museum, but also through her service on the Junior Committee for Boys and Girls Club of Oklahoma County and the Leadership Council Group 7 with the Regional Food Bank of Oklahoma. Emma, your love for our state is so contagious. You are serving in so many areas of our community. Why is your work at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame important to you as it relates to giving back to the city and state that you live in? Absolutely. So one of my favorite things about working with the Oklahoma Hall of Fame is that so much of what we do is about our community. Um, every day we work really hard to make sure that our community members are finding um, are finding things to identify and relate to within the museum and within the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and so that we can continue um, continue moving our state forward with generations to come. Well said, yes, and that is very important. We need to know where we came from to know where we're going, so thank you for sharing that. Today we have so much to talk about, one of which is Homeschool Day on Wednesday, October 27th. This special day is an opportunity to provide homeschool educators and students an opportunity to engage as a family in and out of classroom experiences and interact with the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. Activities will address a number of subjects, including math, science, geography, history, and many others. So can you give us a few more details about the activities that will be included that day um, and what educators and parents who are interested in attending might expect? Absolutely. So Homeschool Day is a program that we're super excited to launch. Um, the theme for this one is actually Space Day. Oklahomans are, Oklahoma is the only state with this um, with a member from the state in every phase of space travel. We don't have the most astronauts, but we are the only state with, every, with someone in every phase. Um, so on space, on homeschool day, we'll be celebrating that. Um, you can find escape rooms that help you, that help you travel through the history of Oklahomans in space. And we'll have obstacle courses that are set in space, um, art activities, and everything is based in, um, in education. And it's designed for families to come and participate as a whole. Um, so pre-registration is, is required. So you show up that day. And you, as your, you and your family or the group that you come with will move through the activities um, as a group together, getting to kind of experience, uh, getting to experience all of the different members of the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and other notable Oklahomans that contributed to our role in space travel. That sounds like so much fun. <laughs> Anything space themed is always fun, yes. but there's some learning, some activity, physical activity, some arts. I just love all of that. Do you have to be enrolled in a homeschool program in order to participate? No, you do not. And um, we just ask for you to register in advance. Um, that way we know how many people to prepare for and we can kind of start mapping out the day. So you do not have to be registered with the co-op. If you are though, um, we can, that does work. And if you want to kind of come at the same time as other groups and travel through together, that works as well. Awesome. How fun is that? I love that the museum is pouring into educators of our state and kids of our state, um, truly one of the most needed areas for the success of future generations. And if you're not an educator or involved in homeschool programs or um, interested in other things, the Hall of Fame still has activities for you. There's a fan favorite coming up. It's called Fall Y'all and it's just around the corner. Just as it sounds, this day is full of fall fun activities. Emma, tell us more about what we can look forward to for Fall Y'all. Absolutely. Fall Y'all is one of our favorite programs each year. Um, every year we change things up just a little bit, but every, um, every family that comes will get to experience um, different activities across the grounds of the museum. So we'll have um, a new maze this year. We'll have art activities. We um, will have music activities. We, of course, have pumpkin painting. We wouldn't have Fall Y'all without pumpkin painting. Um, so there'll be opportunities for families to explore all of these different activities, as well as explore the museum and the exhibits as well. 
Um, registration is not required for this event, um, so but the program is free to enjoy for all community members. Awesome. And is it an all day event? It is. So the program will be um, Wednesday through Friday, October 13th through the 15th from 10 to 2. Um, and then we'll also have a late night on Thursday from 5 to 730. Yeah. Tell us more about that late night and how it uh, differs from your daytime activities. Yeah, so um, since the program is actually running Wednesday to Friday this year, we chose to um, do also do a late night to make sure um, that those that may not have the chance to visit during the day would still have the opportunity to participate in the program. And um, so we won't have, uh, the activities won't necessarily be different, but the building will still be open to explore. All of the activities across the grounds will still be going. Um, and we'll have some volunteers from our team board that are coming out to help with that event as well. So you'll have, so families will have a chance to get to know another facet of our organization. Um, but the program will still be free. Registration is not required. So it'll be a good time for families to come out um, on a day that may work better for them. Yes. And I'm sure working families especially appreciate that. Sometimes it's yes. hard to squeeze in all the fun things during the day. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, that's awesome. I'm sure you're going to have a great turnout. Um, and you did mention teen board. That is one thing that I would love to know more about. I know our listeners might be um, really interested in. Um, many of your programs um, might seem like they're for smaller kids, but you serve older ages too. Um, you have the teen board, there's some scholarship involved. So can you tell us about that program um, and including how you can be involved and then what some of the benefits and activities those teens would be involved in are? Absolutely. So um, the Oklahoma Hall of Fame team board actually just got started for this year, but we do have a team board every year. Um, these, this is uh, currently it's 20, uh, 42 students from 29 different high schools. Um, so we have, um, we have several opportunities. So on this board, um, high school students aged nine through 12th grade are able to join the Oklahoma Hall of Fame team board and they are exposed to professional development, um, different ways to get involved in their community. Um, and also how to work within um, work within their schools to kind of better some of the opportunities that high school students have access to. So they are also um, they participate in a fundraiser every year, and that fundraiser helps fund some of the educational programs at the Oklahoma Hall of Fame. Um, but the team board is it's a great opportunity. Um, they're exposed to so many things with professional development, different speakers. They get the chance to hear from Hall of Fame members and engage with them. It's a lot of fun. Um, so that team board that rolls that happens every year. Um, that information can be found on our website. And um, you also mentioned scholarships. We do offer scholarships in all 77 counties, as well as the Oklahoma Hall of Fame scholarship, which is awarded um, to one uh, to one senior every year. Um, so, but that test, that registration deadline is coming up. So make sure and check that out. Um, it is in, I think it's September 17th is the deadline. Um, so make sure to check that out. But um, we have several scholarships and there's um, all that information again, it's on our website. Great. That is awesome. Do you have to be a member of the teen board to qualify for any of those scholarships? No, you do not. We do not. Uh, that's not a requirement. Any um, The scholarships that are available in each county are available to uh, high school students aged uh, ninth, through, ninth grade through 12th grade. Um, and then the Oklahoma Hall of Fame scholarship is available to um, one senior. And But no, you is not, is not required to be on the teen board. That's great. I love the opportunity to um, be involved and give back because, of course, that looks good on college applications, too. But then there's some opportunity to get a little extra financing for what is increasingly expensive. <laughs> so I love that you yes. all are supporting kids in that way as well. Absolutely. It's two of our favorite programs. Yes, and then they get to be involved in all these fun activities, which it just comes full circle. Um, and speaking of some other things that are fun at the museum, the Hall of Fame has rotating exhibits for families to enjoy. Can you tell us what's on display currently? Absolutely. So we are actually in the process of installing three new exhibits right now. So they will all be open in time for Fall Y'all and Homeschool Day. Um, so we just installed a new exhibit about Stanley Draper, who um, was known as kind of Mr. Oklahoma City for a long time. He was very involved in our community and helping establish some of our um, some of the favorite some of our favorite things here in our community. Um, additionally, we just installed a new um, art gallery in the Tulsa World Wharton Family Gallery. It features three fiber artists, um, so definitely some interesting work there. Um, and then we are in the process of also installing a Women Changemakers exhibit. It features seven different um, females from the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and around the state that have, um, that have earned the title of being a changemaker and finding ways to better, better our communities and the opportunities that we all see each day. 
I love that change maker piece because of course, you know, um, we don't learn enough about women in history and a lot of girls coming up can, can find role models and, and maybe help path, forge their own path forward um, in Oklahoma history as well. Yeah, we're very excited about it. Yes. So every Tuesday morning, you also host Discovery Days for kids, and this is for younger kids. Um, it's a virtual program that includes history, enrichment, learning, and a craft, too. So tell us how long this program has been going on and maybe a favorite story of a session that you've hosted. Yeah. So Discovery Days um, kind of branched out of another virtual program that we launched um, during the summer of 2020. And um, we felt that, that the need for this program continued even after we reopened to the public. Um, and this program has been, it's been, um, we're almost at a year now, give it just about two more weeks and it'll be a year of this program. Um, but it's been so much fun. And it used to be on Thursdays and now it's on Tuesdays and we've kept the, we've kept our a good audience with that. Um, but it's so much fun during when we were all still at home um, all the time, it was kind of this nice break to be able to log in and still see so many kids and enjoy that time together. Um, and we find that it's still that for us. And so um, we formed relationships with people that participate in this program. Um, one of them, I, we got to sing to her, we got to sing happy birthday to her. Um, and we received first day of school pictures for all these kids. And it's just so much fun to be able to form these relationships with these families. Um, and it really kind of brought us back to the heart of what we do and why we do the things that we, the, these programs. It's, so we can form relationships with our community and um, be of service to them. And so we were, this program is so, is so much fun, um, but we get to read books and do, uh, do crafts and it's a lot of fun with craft kits that you can pick up each month. And um, it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> it's one of my favorites. That's great. Yes, I can tell. And it sounds like such a fun program. you got to start early when it comes to relationships with um, anybody. But uh, I just love that you guys are capitalizing on that and uh, really pulling people in and, and getting to have a little fun as well. Yeah. So those programs are on Tuesdays. And what time does that start? Those are on uh, every Tuesday morning at 1030. Perfect. And what is the ideal age group for that program? Yeah, this program is geared towards um, about three to seven. We have seen some younger kiddos. We have a 15 month old actually that participates regularly and he loves it. Um, and so we've also got a couple of older kids that um, that love it as well. There were so a lot of the crafts are able to be modified as well. Um, and since we're doing them in home, usually with parents, it's a little bit easier to make modifications for the age of your child. Yes, of course. So I've got a toddler and I've got to say, I miss coming to those classes with him. I miss going out in the community and, and being around other parents with similar age kids and, and exposing him to a little bit of culture. So I'm glad you all have found a way to still continue that um, and to provide some entertainment and some outlet for parents at home with, especially parents of littles that are just, of course, bouncing off the walls and needing new activities and trying to be a sponge and learn everything. And so it's nice to have a program planned out for you in those situations. Yeah, absolutely. And we have taken to, um, we know that the timing isn't right for everyone. So we also record, uh, we also record those programs and they're available on our website at any time. So that's great to know. Perfect. Well, thank you. So speaking of programs that have come out of the pandemic um, and are new over the past year, can you talk to us a little bit about your COVID protocols uh, when visitors are coming to your building? So right now um, in the building is um, masks are recommended um, in the building. Our staff continues to wear masks and practice social distancing. Um, for field trips, we are still requiring masks just because it's a largely unvaccinated population. Um, but then each program differs. So kind of what those protocols are. So and then, of course, we're monitoring things as they continue to change. So um, all of that is on our website as well. Um, we stay pretty on top of keeping that updated as well as in the building. Okay, great. That's good to know. Uh, lastly, you guys have an outstanding gift shop that I feel like is super underrated. It's filled with local goodies that you cannot find anywhere else. So are you able to tell us about any new fall favorite products to kind of get us in the mood of the season uh, that you might have gotten in recently? Yes. Um, so we have been kind of expanding, um, expanding our collection of uh, local vendors. And it's been so much fun to see the increase in that um, and to be able to work with those community partners. But we recently started carrying Sage and Elm Apothecary. So these are all handmade soaps and lotions and oils um, that make the gift store smell wonderful, honestly. Um, but they're great products um, and she handmakes everything. 
Um, with football season upon us, um, we also just recently started carrying Silas Salsa. Um, this is a local salsa company. They have an sounds different, but they have a great dill pickle salsa that is wonderful. Oh my goodness. Um, I've never heard of that before. Yes. I had neither and I had my doubts, but it is so good. And we've already sold, I don't, I mean, just staff alone. We've bought several jars. Um, <laughs> Perks of working so, in the museum right there. <laughs> yes. Yes, absolutely. And they're great to work with too. Um, several of their proceeds benefit um, a local dog rescue as well. So they're wonderful partners to have. Um, we also started carrying Orton seasoning. Um, they are great on just about everything. Um, and then we also, the most recent thing we got in is a state park candle collection. Um, so each one of these candles features an Oklahoma state park and the different kind of um, the different natural parts of their communities and what that may smell like in a candle form. So they're great to have around, um, but we're really excited to be increasing all of that, um, all of those opportunities with local vendors. Oh, I just love all of that. That state park candle sounds so fun, especially yes. if temperatures cool off. Yes, I would like to have some kind of fine <laughs> aromatherapy going on in my home. Yes, exactly. <laughs> when we can't all escape to Beaver's Bend, I guess we can at least smell it from the candle. <laughs> we can bring it home with us. Yes, I love yes. that. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Emma, for coming to talk with us today. It's been a pleasure learning more about the Oklahoma Hall of Fame and all that you do to service families in our community. For those of you listening, you can find out more about Homeschool Days, Fall Y'all, and all the other fun programming and events at www.oklahomahof.com. Thanks again, and join us next time on Raising OKC Kids.